What it is, guys, it's Shadana. We're back again with another review, so let's just get straight into it. This one is for Gunryu 2, and it is the sequel to the Gunryu game made back by Visco on the Neo Geo back in the 1990s, which was specifically 1999. This sequel is set in the universe that it takes place in a feudal fantasy Japan era, which is strongly inspired by the story of Takezo Musashi, whose adventures are unfolded in a series of books, mainly The Stone and the Sword. You play as Miyamoto Musashi traveling through a 17th century fantasy Japan from north to south to the island of Gunryojima where everything started between Musashi and Kojiro. So if you never played the original back in 1989, it's, it's a great game. I'm sure you could find it online or I could probably try and get hold of a copy and probably do another review for that one. I mean, I will say this straight away. This game gives you the Shinobi vibe it will do because it's it's like the same thing it does the exact same thing but it's set in japan in a feudal era it is that hard unforgiving gameplay so much fun to play and it can be frustrating the developer is storybird studio and the publisher is just for games the genre is a 2d platformer and it is on the playstation 4 the nintendo switch the pc and the xbox one don't forget Smash the dino tail on that but that like button. It's greatly appreciated. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the love and support. I will say this. The key features of this game are as follows. You get to explore the 19th century fantasy Japan through the seasons of spring, summer, fall, and winter. But the, the story is inspired by the book, like I just said. You have features like dash, double jump, wall jump, throwing kunais. And you have to use all those skills to defeat the enemies. You could also defeat Kojiro in the floating fortress and save Japan. Use your special abilities like Nenpo, like you do have in Shinobi. You'll see me use some of those to beat the first boss. And it's called Kami's in this one. And you can collect Hanafuda cards throughout the levels, which are pretty cool. But if you die, you'll lose them. And you have to go back and collect them if you haven't hit the checkpoint. So there is the digital edition, the standard edition, and the limited edition. The digital edition is just the games and is available on the Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. The standard edition is available on the Switch and the PlayStation 4 only. And that's a physical edition with exclusive artwork. And the limited edition is a physical edition limited to only a thousand. It's got exclusive artwork, a certificate of authenticity, and exclusive uh, goodies and a holographic sticker and is available only in a physical form on the switch and the playstation 4 sadly no no physical release for the xbox but you can get it digitally which is cool because it's on every platform then so it is a very interesting game it plays very well and i'm going to explain the story for you after his defeat of kajiro in the first game Musashi decided to meditate and try his hand at art in the north of Japan, in the province called of Hokkaido. During one of his meditations, a spirit contacts him and says, Miyamoto Musashi, our fight is not over. I am waiting for you to finish our fight once and for all. All of Japan will pay for your insult. I am waiting for you, Miyamoto Musashi. There is no doubt for Musashi that the voice was Sasaki Kojiro's one. And his body was defeated, but his spirit remains, and his intentions were very destructive. Miyamoto Musashi then understood that he would have to travel across Japan from north to south, go to the island of Genryujima, where he firstly defeated Sasaki Kojiro, and fight him again and liberate the, the, the spirit of Kojiro forever. For those who don't know, in the first game, Kojiro and Musashi were actually childhood friends, and Kojiro went down the bad path and Musashi went down the good path. So dark versus light kind of thing. Actually a really good story. I do think it's very well told. It's it's a really good game. Overall, it is that old style of game where it's, it's not gonna be forgiving. And if you like games like Shinobi, Way of the Ninja and stuff like that, it is perfect for you. This game has a lot of fun. I do think that it's very difficult for those who aren't into this style of gameplay and it's not going to be going to hold your hand it is definitely one of those games where you'll play it and it can be quite frustrating there are hidden secrets throughout the level that we have to find them like smashing walls and smashing the lanterns and stuff like that there are so many different things you can do and it's, it's a really good game 
it is a, definitely a throwback to the 90s where you had some classics like shinobi and stuff I, yes i know i keep mentioning the shinobi but this is the closest analog to this style of game that i can think of it's, it's really good and i do enjoy it i feel that it has a lot to offer and given the fact that there's all, all this this focus on making games look as realistic as possible with unreal engine 5 and stuff like that it's nice to have games like this that honor the old ways of of games you know the the era that i grew up in in the 90s playing games on mega drive and stuff like that it's good to see this sort of thing and it's another way of having game preservation as well having games that are from the, the 90s and stuff where game preservation wasn't in the forefront of people's minds now it's very much in the forefront of a lot of people's minds in especially the modding community and stuff like that with the emulations and stuff like that they're always thinking about how we can preserve these games and companies need to step up nintendo need to step up microsoft sega all these companies need to start coming up with a collaborative way to preserve these games even if it's a case of creating bumper packs or um creating ways of allowing people to emulate them if if they're not earning any money because at the end of the day we don't care about the the whole making money out of emulation we just want to keep the games alive because there are games like shining force that i love that whilst if it weren't for the sega mega drive ultimate collection that game would have been lost we would have lost take shining force shining in the darkness to the annals of game preservation so and, and it's good to see things like that keeping the games alive so we can keep them alive for future generations and that's what this in my opinion is trying to do is trying to say that these games have a place even in the modern um type of gaming they they want to have them preserved and this game is an example of a way of preserving that it's using the original style of gameplay but making it look and run better and it it is the way that people need to be thinking about all the different games out there that need to be preserved and i feel that this is a really good example of this the game's great it plays it plays smooth i played this on the playstation because that's what they gave me a copy for i was super grateful to get a copy of it i was not paid for this review it's they literally just gave me a copy of the game said hey would you like to review this and i said yes so that's basically it and if you do have an opinion or remember playing games like shinobi or any of the retro games please sound off in the comments i'd love to know what games you guys would love to see brought forward to the newer generations and if you do want to have this discussion you can hit me up in the lives i do that on social media as well i love talking about this stuff everywhere anime games it's, it's my it's my jam i can sit there and vibe about it and talk about it for days and hours and hours and hours so please don't don't hesitate to hit us up in the lives and have a chat with us talk about these cool things we can share our love for the, these these genres and these old games and we can talk about the, the bygone era of these games and what we would love to see brought forward and preserved and how we'd like to see it preserved because at the end of the day we are the gamers and our voice needs to be heard and so supporting games like this in my opinion is very very key and it does help them grow and bring awareness to the want to have these these game types of games preserved so please guys if you do check it out give it a positive review let people know on social media that it has a great place to play on yes i know my gameplay sucks because i suck at the game I'm not going to deny that these games aren't really games that I do well on because of my disability and I do struggle with them quite a bit, but I have fun playing them with playing them. So I think that as always gaming, it should be enjoyable regardless of whether you're good at a game or not. If you're having fun, that's what matters. So that's what I'm trying to highlight here, even with my, my bad gameplay. Thanks for watching guys. I'll check you in the next one. Be safe. See you then.